Welcome to Machines and More. You know you're an SFF enthusiast when you look at the case's cooler specs, add three millimeters to get to the absolute max, and then figure out a way to still force or bend a cooler that's yet another two millimeters higher than that number, right? So in that spirit, let's take a look at two more air cooler options today. And I think for me, the best air cooler for the Meshlicious is going to revolve around these two. And it's mainly because of form factor. Unlike an AIO liquid cooler where you'd always put the radiator at the front of the case with little variation in terms of the form of the radiator, these low profile coolers have design details that influence how well they fit and perform. And that certainly is the scenario we have here. And I'll expound on that in this video. We looked at the Noctua L12 Ghost previously, and I suggested the Noctua L12S with its A12 by 15 millimeter fan would be one of the best out of box options. And certainly the $45 Scythe Big Shuriken 3 is also in the conversation too for the best stock setup. I've seen some of you also kindly suggested the Alpenfond Black Ridge for this case. I'm sure it would be great for this case, but I don't have one of those right now and they're not readily available from the typical retail channels. So I'll test the similar ID Cooling IS60 EVO that I first built into the Geek G1SE. The form factor and the design of this cooler is remarkably similar to the Black Ridge. It also features six heat pipes plus a slim 92 millimeter fan under the heatsink, but it also comes stock with a 15 millimeter RGB fan to go on top. And usually the price is around $50. Although when I checked right now, it was actually coming in at $40. So the Scythe Big Shuriken 3 and the IS60 EVO are definitely in the ballpark of each other pricing wise. But just like the Black Ridge, which is a low, low 47 millimeters, the height of the IS60 is what makes it an interesting option for this case. And without the top fan, it only measures about 49 millimeters. And that means with this cooler, you can just swap in a standard 25 millimeter fan and you're still just a hair over the specified maximum for this case. And it fits really well. For the Big Shuriken 3, it measures in at around 69 millimeters with the stock Kaze Flex Slim fan. But this fan is a little bit thicker at 17 millimeters. So with a 25 millimeter fan on top, the heat sink gets to about 77 millimeters or so. So although it's definitely proud of this case by a bit, we can actually try to close that cover. Let's see. All right. So yeah, now it actually closes. And I did have to take off the vibration dampeners on the bottom of the fan to get it to fit. But yeah, now it actually closes just fine. The mesh is resting directly on the fan and the panel is pushed out just a little tiny bit. But hey, at least here with my setup, the big Shuriken 3 with a 25 millimeter fan is A-OK. -okay. So despite being a great cooler, that's something the Noctua L12S can't do in this case since the fan has to go underneath the heatsink to fit in this case. So it's not like we can swap it out for a thicker fan. And we definitely want to use the best fan possible, right? If we're talking about the best cooler. So the form factor is what excludes the L12S from being what I would call the best air cooler for the Meshlicious. For reference, at stock, the L12S is better than the Big Shuriken 3 by about half a degree or so typically. And that is a gap that a better 25 millimeter fan can easily overcome. So in part, it's a game of numbers coupled with some opportune specification tolerances. And let's just jump into the testing data here with the Ryzen 5 3600. So I've kept the exhausting case fans at a relatively high level here at 1500 RPM consistent with prior testing since they are the only case fans for this case, but you should certainly set them on a curve to max out during heavy system loads and not necessarily run them this fast all the time despite being very quiet fans. At stock, the Big Shuriken 3 is a really great cooler, coming in well ahead when noise normalized. And the IS60, while it should be pretty competent, suffers because of the noise level. The little fan spins at high RPM relative to the main fan, so for this noise level, the main fan can only run at 1230 or so RPM since 56% PWM here still results in the little fan running at a high RPM, and it's a buzzy little guy. 
the fan speeds almost have to be matched that way though, because we're matching different sized fans for push pull. Now taking off the small 92 millimeter fan actually makes this much more competitive since the large fan is doing the heavy lifting anyway, and it can run much faster now without the noise penalty from that little fan. So now the results are much closer. But leaving these with stock fans is just one part of the equation, right? The, the reason I'm considering these two is for the ability to pop on the standard 120 millimeter fan. So how do these heat sinks fare with a fan upgrade? And in one case to the best fan possible. Testing two fan options here, the Noctua NFA 12 by 25 and the P12 ARGB recently reviewed on the channel. Both are pretty good fans, but the Noctua is generally a degree or two better in this application. And we see the same difference play out here. For the IS60 with the bottom 92 millimeter fan removed and with the fan upgrade, the IS60 really runs ahead now. It's really impressive here. And although for the stock IS60 P12 ARGB is an upgrade, for the Big Shuriken 3 with how good the fan works uh, with the cooler, it's almost more of a side grade. Uh, critically, the cooler is designed to be used with this fan. In the past, I've tested the Big Shuriken 3 with the Slim Noctua NFA 12 by 15 that comes on the L12S, and it's actually worse when you put that fan on there. And it really comes down to where the fan places airflow versus the actual amount of airflow. If you don't care about noise and you really want to max out the IS Cool 60 for cooling, using that 92 millimeter fan is a way to get another smidgen of better temps. Although for me, unless you're already at 100% on the main fan, it makes more sense just to run your single fan at a higher RPM. For these test parameters, there's still a bit of headroom left. And if you needed an extra boost, you still have it. But I don't think you would typically need to go much higher for a 65 watt chip. For acoustic testing, let's take a quick listen to stock fans for both of these coolers, as well as the upgraded fans with the IS60. So while the Big Shuriken 3 has a bigger heat sink by about 30 or so grams, it is more chunky on the bottom. And because of that, it wouldn't allow as much airflow out uh, underneath it. Whereas despite the smaller heat sink mass, the IS60 has a very open C-shape form underside, especially with the 92 millimeter fan removed. The IS60 also has that extra heat pipe versus the Big Shuriken 3, so that difference does amount to a consistent advantage when we are comparing like for like with the same fans. A couple other differences with the coolers worth noting, RGB fan, non-RGB fan. The scythe also thoughtfully includes longer screws for a 25 millimeter fan, so you're ready to go out of the box for that upgrade. But for the IS60, you're gonna need to source some longer M3 screws that'll mate with the cooler. Also, the IS60 doesn't use a back plate. It doesn't concern me if you have a fairly sturdy PCB, but I really wish they would have notched out the heatsink and just made it screw into the stock AMD backplate. But for my time with the IS60, this hasn't really been a huge issue. I mean, it is a small heatsink after all. Lastly, both of these heatsinks have an orientation where the RAM clearance isn't an issue at all. So that is a huge plus in SFF, especially if you have nice looking RAM. Best is a bit of a subjective term, and I think you could easily argue that either of these are the best for this case, certainly out of the box. And considering its upgrade path, the Big Shuriken 3 appears to be the winner if you wanna just try it out stock and then see if you want the option for better thermals with that fan upgrade. Of course, keeping in mind that we are well in the realm of unsupported cooler heights with this and a standard 25 millimeter thick fan. So you may not be able to close that case panel depending on your setup. On the other hand, if you want the absolute best performance and you're going to throw a new fan on it anyway, the ID Cooling IS60 EVO is the best cooler that I've tested for this case. And comparing heat sinks across the IS60 heat sink is better in this case. So at the end of the day, both are very suitable for something like an Intel i5-11400 or Ryzen 5 5600X, and you really can't go wrong with either in the meshlicious if that's the level of CPU you're trying to cool. And for sure, you don't have to go with a 240 EAO.
So that'll wrap up air cooling here for this case. I'll be moving on to the custom loop content for this series. So if you haven't already, please uh, subscribe, please give a like, and links are down below for the products discussed today in the build. And thanks for watching today.